I'm going to show step-by-step step how you, the SOLIDWORKS user, can use 3D Experience Simulation to quickly and easily set up a static analysis with advanced contacts. Compute it on the cloud, tweak the design in SOLIDWORKS based on the results, update and rerun the finite element model in just a few clicks, and finally, instantly share the successful results with a colleague. The SOLIDWORKS connector links your SOLIDWORKS files to the platform and enables collaboration between the two programs. With the file open, we can navigate to the 3D Experience Compass from the Task pane in SOLIDWORKS. Choose Save with Options and make sure the Convert option is checked. Switching to the 3D Experience Dashboard, we can search for the file set and to make sure we have the correct models, we'll use the 3D Play app to view the files. We can even pin this search so we can easily get back to our model from the dashboard. Then we're ready to launch the Mechanical Scenario app directly from our file. You can think of this app like the SOLIDWORKS simulation add-in inside of SOLIDWORKS. While most of the 3D Experience apps run in your web browser, 3D Experience simulation apps are a small install on your Windows machine. Both types of apps are synced to the same cloud PDM data. The app starts locally with a new file open. The first place to go when starting a structural simulation is the Assistant. It's a useful tool whether you're just starting out or an experienced pro. We also launched the Feature Manager, which allows us to control the already applied setup of the simulation. The simulation initializes and I recommend renaming the physics simulation to be named the same as your file set. This makes finding files easy later. Define the finite element model to be used in the simulation. This step allows you to specify which geometry components are the contributing shapes used in the analysis. Next, specify the step. Multiple steps can be in one analysis, however in this case we will be applying just one static step. Choosing the parts section of the assistant takes us to the solid sections of the model. The solid sections are related to the specified parts we are analyzing within the finite element model representation. We will apply appropriate materials to the solid sections. Edit the solid section and choose the magnifying glass in the solid section menu. This opens the material palette. Choose the appropriate material for the specific body. Next, we will apply the mesh. A benefit of 3D Experience Simulation is the wide range of mesh capabilities. We will use a standard tetrahedral mesh for the main components and a hex mesh for the connecting pins. Either choosing the mesh category from the assistant or the mesh tab on the action bar below takes you to the mesh options. Choosing the swept hex mesh option, apply the hex mesh to the connector pins. Choosing Tetrahedral starts the Mesh Property Manager. Select the body you wish to apply the mesh to and specify your preferences. A tie or bond is added to the shock mount pins and the shock mounts. The interaction step in the assistant applies conditions that define how the parts interact with each other. We will use a general contact borrowed from Abacus. This powerful general contact does not allow bodies to penetrate each other, but allows sliding and separation. The middle section of the model represents the radio control car's chassis section. 3D Experience Simulation offers a wide range of restraints. We will restrain the lower face of the chassis using the clamp. 3D Experience Simulation provides a host of load types. For this model, a force of 200 pounds is chosen to mimic a high impact load and is broken into its components to follow the 45 degree angle the shocks are mounted and applied to the mounting pins. Lastly, a verification of the global element type is required. We can see this is the last red section in the feature manager. After this verification, we will have all green checks in the assistant indicating we can solve the study. Choosing simulate from the assistant opens the simulate property manager. Under location, we can choose local interactive which runs using your machine's hardware up to eight cores and provides feedback regarding iterations, warnings, etc. Local non-interactive, which again runs on your machine, but in the background. In cloud, that uses cloud computing, freeing up your local machine for other duties. We will use cloud compute and utilize the max number of free cores. You can always purchase tokens to unlock more cloud computing cores. With the solve complete, we can view the results. Quickly, we can see not only do we exceed the allowed stress in the model, 
but the structure is also deforming beyond acceptable limits. Viewing the von Mises stress plot, we can walk through the application of the load and the resultant output per increment. We can view factor safety, displacement, and contact pressure among others. We can section our results and utilize many other result tools. Save the study by choosing the bent arrow in the upper right hand corner. We can see that this design is not meeting expectations. Let's adjust the geometry inside SOLIDWORKS. Back in SOLIDWORKS, we want to reserve the component we want to change in the 3D Experience add-in panel. Right mouse button the component in the list and choose the reserve button, a lock with the green key. Opening the component we want to change, we can unsuppress the features we want to include. Back in the main assembly, the reserved components are indicating that a save to 3D Experience is required. Right mouse button on the components and choose the save. Lastly, choose the unlock button to unreserve the components. Back in 3D Experience, we will see a SOLIDWORKS update button. Choose this button to update the model in 3D Experience to the changes we made in SOLIDWORKS. Note that a remesh of the changed components is required. We will edit the mesh and recreate. With all green checks in the assistant, we can rerun the study. Viewing the updated results, we can see less overall displacement and reasonable stress values. Now that the results are satisfactory, my colleague Matt needs to see it. Rather than send him files to download and open, I share the results over 3D Experience, which he can even view from his phone if he wants. I hope this helps you understand how to take advantage of 3D Experience Simulation as a SOLIDWORKS user. It's still connected to your CAD, has a guided workflow, and you can get access to the more robust Abacus Solver and the freedom of cloud compute. It's also super easy to update and rerun your models and share results with colleagues. If you'd like to learn more about 3D Experience Simulation or 3D Experience Support, click the link in the description below.